Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to be talking about uh, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. Um, actually, we're only going to mention uh, tertiary and quaternary structure towards the end. I'm not really going to discuss it too much. Um, I wanted to concentrate on this lesson on secondary structure, in particular the alpha helix and the beta conformation, or otherwise known as the beta sheet. So let's just jump in and see what we can do. Okay, so um, let's recap. So we've talked about the primary structure of the protein. The primary structure is its sequence of amino acids. That's it. Just the string, lengthwise string of amino acids. Um, alanine, glycine, leucine, isoleucine, whatever combination happens to be. So that is referred to as the primary sequence. Now, secondary structure, secondary structure occurs when the protein starts to fold. Now, the complete folded protein, that's the tertiary structure. But before that, as parts of this polypeptide chain start to fold and go this way and that way, there are certain patterns that develop simply by virtue of the nature of the peptide bond and the interactions that can take place and some of the constraints on bond rotation. Two of those patterns are the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's lesson. So this is our primary concern. Now the tertiary structure is of course the complete folded polypeptide chain. Once this has taken on the final shape that it's going to take in three space. Now if you have more than one subunit uh, in a particular protein, two, three, four, five, however many, when you put those individual units together, that constitutes the quaternary protein structure. So all proteins have primary, secondary, tertiary. Um, some proteins that have multi subunits, they're the ones that have the quaternary structure. Okay, so let's get started. Now, let's see. Weak interactions among the amino acids, among the amino acids in the peptide chain gives rise to the secondary and tertiary structures of a protein. Okay. In other words, secondary and tertiary structures just means it's folded state. So a protein doesn't just stay as one long amino acid. It actually uh, takes on some conformation. Okay. And again, let's go ahead and list these interactions. Again, these interactions, the weak, what we call the weak interactions, are you have hydrogen bonding, which is probably the most important. Hydrogen bonding. You have hydrophobic interactions. Hydrophobic interactions, probably the next most important. Well, actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that one is more important than the other. Hydrogen bonding, yeah, it's probably the most important. But the others, I wouldn't necessarily classify them because they all participate. Uh, hydrophobic interactions. We have polar interactions. Polar interactions. And we have our ionic interactions. So those account for the weak forces, the weak interactions. Now, covalent interactions, there is some covalent interactions, but they're represented by only the sulfur-sulfur bond, the disulfide bond. So covalent interactions, which facilitate folding, include the disulfide bond. That's about it. And we've talked about the disulfide bond when we talked about amino acids. Oh, primary sequence. Okay, disulfide bonds. Okay. Now, uh, two principles. 
two principles govern the folding patterns we'll discuss. So these are the two principles that you just want to keep in the back of your head. Well, not necessarily just in the back of your head, but we're not going to discuss them more than just mentioning uh, what it is that they are. So two principles govern the folding patterns that we'll discuss. One of them is that hydrophobic, the hydrophobic amino acid side chains They collect in the interior of a folded protein away from the aqueous solution. So proteins are soluble. Proteins are floating around in aqueous solution. But again, hydrophobic means that they're afraid of water. They don't want to be near the water. So when a protein folds, it tends to have its hydrophilic amino acid side chains on the outside, they can interact with the water. The hydrophobic, they tend to be on the inside, as far away from the water as possible. They collect in the interior of a folded protein. Makes total sense. That's exactly what happens. So I'll write away from water. Okay, and two, hydrogen bonds are maximized. So again, Hydrogen bonding, very, very important for protein folding. And hydrogen bonds, I will say, tend to be maximized. OK, uh, let's go ahead and recall the peptide bond. So the peptide bond, let me see, let me go to blue here. So let's recall. the peptide bond. We have, um, remember our pattern? We do NCC, NCC, right? And let me see, NCC, the second carbon always gets, you know what, I need a little bit more room here, so let me redraw this. And in fact, I think I'm going to do my resonance structure left and right instead of up and down. So let me start over here on the left. So let me go N, C, C, N, C, C. And the second carbon always gets the carbonyl. And let me see, I'll go ahead and do, um, well, let me see. Yeah, that's fine. I'll go ahead and put some electrons there. And I'll go ahead and just add a couple of, well, you know what, that's fine. I'll go ahead and just leave it like that. So it goes on, of course, in this direction and in that direction. But I was just concerned with a single peptide bond. This is your peptide bond right here, the carbonyl connected to the nitrogen. Okay? Very, very important. Let me go ahead and put this hydrogen in here. And I'll go ahead and put my electron pair there. Now, this electron pair, there is a resonance going on here. This electron pair actually jumps here, creates a double bond, and pushes these electrons onto oxygen. So another resonance structure for the peptide bond is the following. NCC, NC, oops, not there. NCC, jumping the gun a little bit. So we have something like this. So we have this single bonded between the carbonyl and the nitrogen, but it has double bond character because of this resonance structure. Because of this double bond character, this bond, this peptide bond, it can't rotate like a single bond. So this is fixed. This H, this N, this C, and this O, they all lie in a plane. H, N, C, O. o. They're in a plane. That cannot rotate precisely because of this resonance structure, because it has partial double bond character. It isn't a complete single bond. It isn't a complete double bond. It's a, it's a resonance. There is resonance going on. Electrons can move. So 